Uh, we're live. What yeah, the fuck's sorry. going on? This motherfucking uh, crack house live, fucking uh, dorky crack corn, and <laughs> we don't care. Hell yeah. We don't. We don't care. Yeah, this is uh, this is fucking monumental. This is spectacular, splendiferous. Uh, this is a quartet of comedy coming to you right now. This we is have- like the prophets of rage. Yeah, it's a super yeah. group. Yeah, we are yeah. we're the Asia of comedy right now. <laughs> we're um, we're like uh in cell XX fuck <laughs> in excess, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Give me a minute. Sorry. Yeah, guys. we're something like that. And uh welcome welcome chat, everybody. Another Saturday edition of Live from the Crack House. We have uh esteemed guests here. We have Miguel Silva and Drew Flores from Dork Court. Uh oh, everybody check good. out Dork Court. And we have uh from the Billionaire Podcast Network, uh, the the billionaire podcaster himself, Dalton Pruitt, everybody. And hello, uh, hello. we'll be streaming uh, here with these boys for about, you know, an hour and a half uh, today. And then I encourage everybody to go into uh, Dalton's chat. Well, more more like two hours. Everybody go into Dalton's chat because he's going to be doing, uh, I think, some Bible study. Cornfed Bible whatever? study. We're going to be studying oh, the yeah, Beatitudes yeah. and the Sermon <laughs> on the Mount. Um Matthew chapter yeah. five verse. Don't give me that the attitude, dude. Yeah, Luke six twenty through something. Um, the beatitudes. Yeah, you taking yeah, so, you taking super chats for for verses? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And speaking of uh, speaking of super chats, they are active right now as we speak. So feel free uh, to support me. Um, you won't be giving any money to any of these guys, but uh, you'll be supporting Tell me, you. and they're, they're friends with me, so. They'll appreciate it too, um, but all of our links are in the description. We got the the Dork Court YouTube and Patreon. We got Dalton's YouTube and Patreon. So whenever you get a chance, go ahead and sub up on those. But in in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, talk to who I think is the star of the show here, Dalton Pruitt. Uh, what's been going on, man? How's your weekend? My weekend? Oh, dude, it's good. I just I just got off work and I had a great I had a great day of sales, dude. I feel like Vin Diesel in a boiler room. Oh, yeah. Um, which is a which is a sales movie I've actually never seen, but I know it's a, I know it's a sales movie. Um, but uh, it is it is funny that he did a movie where he has to wear a suit. You never see you never see Vin in a suit. Yeah, he's kind of just always in like wife beaters. I feel like. <clears throat> yeah, he's always in yeah in like tank tops and stuff like that. And has anybody he, ever figured out what he is? It, like dude, face wise. He's some sort of octoroon, or maybe a <laughs> like a <laughs> orangutan. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. He's definitely something. It, it, that's something you can get been... away with dropping the soft A. I, I think, think he, pro- he could. Vin, Vin Diesel probably could get away with the soft A, but he's you know he probably a... could have after Triple X, but I don't know anymore. After the one where he was like the babysitter or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the pacifier the pacifier yeah, there's, yeah dude. there's people like yeah. that where you wonder like him the rock like it's like can these can these guys drop the the in yeah know? i think the rock I'm, definitely pro- could the rock, well, the definitely. rock can because who's gonna beat him up yeah a lot of black that's the only reason one we're time. not allowed to say it wait was boiler room also jordan belfort yeah i have no idea i don't yeah i don't know I've, I've, like I said, never seen it. <laughs> Me neither. I've seen, yeah, they, uh, I've seen Wolf of Wall Street. It is Street. good though to speculate. I've seen The Big Short. Um, I see The Big Short every time I look at my pants. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a squeeze happening on my penis right now. They're shorting my penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Vin it's Diesel. Bust. The full name. Uh, kind of sounds like a black person's first name, Vin Diesel Washington. A, I think it's like a stage name, though. His, his real name probably. His real name is Mark Sinclair. What? I did have a feeling his real name was not Vin Diesel, but Vincenzo Disel. Yeah. yeah, somebody, somebody <laughs> checked looks like an Italian life. to me, dude. <laughs> Vincenzo D'Elia. Yeah, no his his name is Mark Sinclair, and I don't know how. I think he got the name Vin Diesel when he was working as like a bouncer in New York. 
Damn, dude, that's actually like a that's a dope ass name. That's like an author name. So he had a dope ass name and was like, actually, I'm gonna choose this dope. He had a really like, cool I name. Need a gayer name. And then, yeah, <laughs> and then he came up with a uh, like a gay porn name. Vin Diesel. That's either like a white author or like a black like jazz player. Mark Sinclair. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Sinclair. Oh uh, yeah, he writes for the New Yorker. He, yeah. Or well. He's the Atlantic. The Atlantic. So Sinclair, yeah. what the fuck is that? Because I would have guessed he was like Italian or some shit. I thought he was like a WAP. I he thought might it was, be it sounds French. He, he might be like a Giancarlo Esposito Italian. Uh, you know the, yeah. the guy that's like Gus Fring and bugging out and do the right thing. That yeah, guy, he's Italian. That, Gus Fring is, is Italian. I thought he was half black. Yes. Yeah, he's. Well, he's, he's got to be some kind of Mexican. He's some Skin sort of name. like Mexican Italian black. Yeah, he's like an Othello. <laughs> yeah, his name was his name was Esposito. Es- Esposito. Esposito. So, yeah, Esposito. He, he's <laughs> black. He's a black guy. He's also Italian. <laughs> That's a fucking good one. We're getting warmed up here, guys. We're getting, yeah, we're getting loose. We're dusting the cobwebs off. Let me grab the re- the wheel of this real quick. Let me uh, let me address who we got in the motherfucking chat right now. We got fifty nine boys in here right now. Ten oh, more, yeah. and we'll be really fucking doing some cool shit. We got Stank Boots. We got Scotty, who is a uh, sort of an antagonist of the the Crowder boys. <laughs> Seems like we got a uh, Republic Berserk for Souls. Always always good for a crack house stream. Drew Huntley. Brookings Brown, Token Tony, fucking amazing artist. X Ray Punch broke the gin. Uh, Wesley Wright, yeah, we got we got hella hella boys up in this bitch hella right boys now. Boys are here. Yeah, so it says here in, on Wikipedia that Jordan Belfort claims that Vin Diesel's character in Boiler Room is based on him. <laughs> so that's Jordan Belfort saying that. Hmm. So probably true. Probably true. He he wouldn't lie. I'm sure this point's been made, but have you guys seen like you've seen like the real Jordan Belfort that they like that Leonardo DiCaprio is based on? And every time I see him and I hear him talk, I'm like, how the fuck did this abrasive asshole sell anyone anything? He's so yeah. unlikable. Dude, those Clearly are the guys that are criminal. best at it. It's always like the greasiest goblins that out there that are great at selling because they it's more of like a uh, I don't know. Like Drew, what do you think of that? Yeah. <laughs> are the greasy goblins good at selling? <laughs> the greasy goblins yeah. are good. <laughs> it's, it's a dog whistle for Mexicans. <laughs> uh, yeah, mate. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it's... yeah. To be honest, it's like I'm not going to buy something from somebody if I don't think they're like a scoundrel. Yeah. yeah. Look, dude, look at that dude who, who's been going viral on Twitter the last few weeks. That um, the Nick, Nick something... The Ethereum guy, he he posted that thing where he was on a boat and he was like, "This is who you're trading against." Oh yeah, and he has like, the oh, little, the he, he's guy. a greasy goblin. He's a greasy <laughs> yeah, goblin. Yeah, that is he true. Is. <laughs> I saw him and I was like, "This is who this is who Tom Segura like thinks he's being portrayed as. Like, this is what he's trying to get across. Like, the likable heel, like rich heel, but it's just, it's I, just not. I working. like that guy. The, the, I'm starting to like him." Yeah, he's, when he, he's, he's outside and shit. Like he's yeah, when he posts a video and he's like, Good morning, haters. I'm in my <laughs> limo. And then the because it seems like it's a game between him and the community notes where he's playing with it because he, he's clearly in an Uber, and then the community notes will be like, if you observe the reflection in his glasses, you'll see that this is not a limo, it's actually an Uber. <laughs> and so yeah, so he he's grifting real well. I like that dude. And you know what? He's ugly as shit. He's a greasy goblin. <laughs> but I I saw somewhere he's a, he might actually be like forty two years old. All things considered, he looks pretty fucking good for forty two. Yeah, I've I've seen some pictures with uh, him with like a hot Asian chick too. So he has a hot Asian girlfriend, dude. He's living the fucking. Dream. Well, if there's <laughs> any type of girl that you could buy, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, you in can, modern day, his you hot can buy all kinds girlfriend. of. Yeah, you can buy all kinds of ethnicities now on the with crypto. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's blockchain. People ask Just me like, in. "What's the blockchain? What is crypto?" Because I've been like studying it and figuring it out, and I'm like, "It's to buy uh, ra- ra- uh, women." 
different ethnicities yeah. of women. Bitcoin gets you Japanese. Ethereum will get you like Thai, maybe Korean. Uh, AVAX will get you some sort of like um, Nordic, like East, maybe Eastern European. Yeah, Algorand yeah. will get you like a Filipino. Uh, yeah, Algorand will get you a Filipino. Dogecoin will get you um, like a Malaysian. Uh, like a yeah, a Malaysian. <laughs> you could buy Ian Miles Chong with Dogecoin. <laughs> Which one gets you the boys? <laughs> uh, the boys. Um, Which one has the Quan- boys? Which one? What? That's XRP, dude. XRP. Oh, I got some XRP. Ripple, dude. Ripple's the future of currency. Ripple, dude. If you're trying to, if you're trying to fuck some boys in Thailand, if you're trying to get sucked by a lady boy, XRP. XRP. <laughs> Miguel, do you have XRP? How much XRP? Yeah, I have a bunch have? of XRP. How many? How many? XRP uh, I think have? a couple thousand. You have a couple thousand? Damn, dude. I just yeah. Started I started buying it when it was twenty cents. So Damn. I am yeah. getting in on it at sixty, which is still early. It's still good. You know, some people were predicting it could hit 10k at one point. Yeah, uh, it's it has a troubling history, but yeah, I it, know is, it is hey, perfect for the type of dudes that go to the Philippines to have a little vacation with their bros. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, what what's stopping it from hitting 10k? What a legal battle with the SEC? Don't you know? No, it's not anymore. It's more uh, a large supply, and and it's kind of privately owned. It, it, it's a long conversation. The internet's pretty painfully divided over it. Mm, okay. Well, look, I bought in at 60 cents. If it goes, to, if it just goes to like $5, I'll be happy. Yeah. I'll buy more. I'll forget that I was supposed to sell it and I'll buy more and then it'll never reach $5 again. And I'm, I'm what I'm worried. Do you, do you have a custodial wallet or a self custody wallet? Uh, I have, a couple self custody wallets that I move stuff into for long term storage. Like I have a ledger and shit. Okay, yeah, because all my shit is in like a custody wallet, just like in exchange. I, what I'm worried about with those, where I, I may have to, I'm probably, I will have to pull the trigger on a self custody wallet. Is it? They might pull some shit where it's like, okay, the price of everything jumps up. I go to sell. All of a sudden, I can't make the fucking trade. Wh- well, I, I just got why. like fucking 16 texts from KuCoin. Apparently, they got hit with the SEC case and they had to shut down completely. Mm-hmm. Dude, they're coming. This is how you know that crypto is actually going to work is the fucking the SEC is coming for everyone's ass. Yeah. Did you see Did you see the U.S. government, though, just moved like $2 billion worth of uh, Bitcoin into their Coinbase wallet? Yeah, that they like got from the Silk Road, right? Yeah, they that, just all been that, holding it. They yeah, they I guess they've just been holding it in like a thumb drive or something, and they just moved it into a Coinbase wallet. So Wait, it's like I, the it's the money they seized from that one dude that made the yeah, site. Um, yeah, I guess it's like from the Silk Road and from some other hackers and stuff. They've got like billions of dollars in Bitcoin. They've like confiscated somehow, and they just moved like two billion of it into a um. A Coinbase wallet, like Coinbase is one of the big apps that people use. Is so I guess the like the U.S. government has one. They have a wallet with them, and it's just like I don't know if the government is aware that all of those transactions are. You can see them happening. At this point, they don't give a fuck. I guess so. Yeah. Any uh, folks, welcome to the welcome to Crypto Trap House. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I never know what the fuck is going on with this shit. I just got into it, so I'm, like, stumbling my way through it and finding out that I'm, like, doing everything wrong and I got to fix something. Um, But, hey, I got some Ethereum, I got some XRP, got some AVEX, and, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm just mad because in in probably, like, 2014, 2015, I want to say, I had a couple plugs that were getting drugs from Silk Road. And if they would have just told me, bro, like put a hundred dollars into this shit, I'd probably be rich as fuck by now. But Yo, nobody you know, told me anything. Fentanyl didn't exist before they took down the Silk Road. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Drugs <laughs> used to be good. Drugs used to only kill you if you did too much of them. Yeah. Except yeah. for like you know uh, ecstasy pills that you got at a festival that were mixed with meth. But like, yeah, I mean, I got out at a good time. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's tough to find or trust anyone enough to do any party drugs anymore. 
Yeah, true. yeah. Poppers, I think, are safe. Yeah, if you go to a gay club, you're good. <laughs> you could do poppers. <laughs> yeah, Dalton does John poppers. I do John Popper. I do John Poppers. I do jalapeno poppers. <laughs> what what do pop <laughs> what do poppers actually do besides loosen your asshole? Is it like they, it just feels the high feels similar to a whip it? Oh, okay. Have Which, you done a whip it? Yeah, not a long time though. Yeah. Like in college. So I mean it's funny that but like with the fentanyl going around as much as it has, at this point, the only like safe drugs you the drug you can be sure. When I kill you, are poppers and whippets? Yeah. Have you seen that? Have you seen that guy on Twitter where he just posts videos of him smoking fentanyl in his car? <laughs> no. <What? laughs> yeah, there's some guy. He just posts videos of him smoking fentanyl, which is confusing to me because it's like I thought I thought like a little microgram of this drug can make you overdose. I'm watching like a video of a guy. Smoking no, you like could dose it. Pill. That's that's police propaganda. Yeah, you build a tolerance. I don't think fentanyl is even real. <laughs> think it's, a psy-hop? It's, it's weird because like before, supposedly like a molecule of it was like killing people and making people overdose. All of the junkies that I like worked with and shit, they were all talking about how much they love fentanyl. And then they like when they needed some uh when they needed to get shit done around their house, they'd throw a fentanyl patch on and be up for like three days like working on shit around their house. And then all of a sudden it was thing this thing that like if you have a microscopic amount, it can kill you. So I don't I don't understand fucking yeah, any I don't of get it. How yeah. it works Dude, either. I just I don't do drugs anymore. No, I'm pretty sure it's a, a drug that they still use in hospitals. They do yeah, well, use it in hospitals, but so, that's medical. It, you know, that's like medical. It's not the fucking Chinese shit that's get winding up in all the cocaine. Yeah, Chinese. Yeah. They used to use it as a like a anesthesia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I got I a cousin know. named Anesthesia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I think Anesthesia is one of the ladies that's been smoking fentanyl. On <laughs> <laughs> you guys see those uh, people on Twitter? That's like, I, this is probably like a, this is. Probably like a Tom Myers joke uh, or something like that. So I I probably am hacky for this, but it's just an observation. Some of these people online are like hitting three bongs of shit at the same time and like smoking a cross joint through their bong and like doing all the shit. And it's like some people really don't grow out of like the high school slash college mentality of smoking. Like once you reach a certain age, you're like, yeah, I just need a couple puffs off of a, a joint or a blunt a and I'm good. Yeah. You you reach a threshold like I don't understand why people are still smoking that way. I do I do kind of wish I was cool enough to be making those videos though. (laughs) Stoner stoner life vid, dude. I think that that's like one of the more untapped things that we could be getting into on the fucking billionaire podcast network is. Uh, yeah, dude, yeah. I, I need to start ripping like absurd dabs. If you, any of you guys want to send me a free rig that has like twelve chambers in it and shit like that, I'll I will develop lung cancer. Yeah, dab <laughs> review. <laughs> Uh, shit. Uh, well, I think it's like um, weed becoming legalized pretty much everywhere. Like killed stoner guys. So those guys who like make smoking weed their personality, that's like a you know, they're dying out. That's like I'm a, so glad too that that that, yeah, that shit is yeah. dying out. Like <laughs> yeah, it was, was so a hard time, dude. But me, like you guys, I think are probably around the same age as me, but I am kind of glad. Here's the one hand is like I am kind of glad that I got to go through kind of the last generation in high school where weed was like considered a drug and people yeah. were g- getting pulled over and arrested because like after like 2013, 2014, that shit was over. Like people's parents are like smoking weed on the way, dropping them off at school and handing them a joint to walk into school <laughs> yeah, with. Yeah, I remember the first that time was I was our saw- civil rights. I remember the yeah. first time I went over to someone's house. I mean, this was in my 20s, and the, these were people I knew who were, like, opening a comedy club in Dallas. They were, like, well-to-do people. They had a son who was, like, seven or eight years old at the time. And when I was over at their house, and they were just, like, ripping bongs, doing bong rips, smoking dubs. I was like, you have bong a fucking hit kid. transplant. Yeah, I was like, you have a fucking kid here. What are you doing? This is just deplorable behavior. <laughs> this is for people whose fucking smoke alarms are chirping, not you. You have full batteries <laughs> in your smoke alarms. Now nah, everybody, everybody smoke had alarms that are family. chirping Americans. <laughs> <laughs> smoke alarm chirp Americans. 
everybody everybody yeah. had a, a family like that that they would go party at and it was always like your friend that their parents would smoke cigarettes inside yeah like, <laughs> and yeah. you just go and they'd be like as long as nobody drives and everybody just gets fucked up they'll like take yeah. a hit of the bong and i remember thinking like if these were my parents and my parents were fucked up i was like if these were my parents i would be fucked up yeah there like i don't even know kid. why this kid goes to school there used to be this kid in my high school like he had a he had a hot like single mom and she would let us like party at his house and they had like a nice like two-story house too and we would go over there like every weekend for like a couple years and then one one night some kid fucked his mom and we just couldn't go over there anymore. Like that was the end of it. Like some kid, some kid ruined it by fucking his mom. Yeah, yeah. I had a, I had a similar thing happen. Um, I think I told the story on rap uh, when I went on there like a year or two ago. But uh, I had a similar situation. We had our friend uh, when we were in high school. I was eighteen. I think I just turned eighteen at the time. And there was a kid who his mom had gotten divorced. A couple of years and she was just so overrun we went over there and did whatever we want like we would just pull up whenever we'd go off to lunch without the kid who lived there and just go smoke on his back deck and shit like we didn't give a fuck and she had a friend that was a little younger than her he had a young mom but uh i think she was like 36 at the time which now is funny because like it seems so old back then but i'm like six years away from being 36 now but uh, for whatever reason, like she was pretty fucking hot. Damn, you're uh, forty two. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I'm forty two. Okay, cool. um, that's good. Good math. Uh, yeah, um, I don't even know if it's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, she she would be over there all the time, and we'd all drink. Like we'd drink with his mom and her, the friend, and uh, we always thought she was hot. And for whatever reason um she took a liking to me i don't know why i had no game i was very quiet maybe that's why she liked me but um yeah she we we went to spring break in myrtle beach one year and she was going down to be one of the chaperones and when she got down there it was like late at night and she just crawled into bed with me and i was like yo what the fuck i'm Does playing even pokemon I'm here? get out of here <laughs> bitch get the fuck out of here um <laughs> But I didn't even know if she knew I was there. And then all, this, all of a sudden she starts grabbing me and uh, grab my dick and shit. And I was like, damn, this is happening. And then we did it a couple more times after that. And of course, uh, I, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't keep it a secret forever. I had to tell people about it. And it got out of hand. It actually ended up, it actually ended up being um, she was a girl that I went to schools with stepmom and it made that relationship really awkward. And I'm actually about to see that girl at a wedding in a couple months. Oh yeah. She's going to be really weird. Uh, Is she yeah. getting married? No, no, no she's, she just, wouldn't she's, invite she's you one of the people there, party. but I, I still love that lady for doing that. Uh, she, yeah. It was great. Her tubes were tied. That was the only time I ever got to bust up inside with no, no conscience. Nice. <laughs> uh, and at the time, I still re here's one of my big regrets in life. I don't have many, um, but she asked me if she could put a finger up my ass, and of course my my young eighteen year old self, I was like, "That shit, gay, bro. What the fuck are you talking about?" And but <clears> now, <throat> if she would have asked me now, I'd be like, "I got the lube for you right here. Let's fucking go." <laughs> yeah, dude. But I didn't know at the time. So yeah, they but that's love, one that's one of my famous that. stories. That's yeah, sick. Yeah. I don't. I don't know anyone else I was molested as a child. So that's that's <laughs> the first. I was eighteen. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah I was eighteen. It you're, was uh, you were nubile. Eighteen and thirty-six. Damn, dude. She was that's double age. You know? Was double your good. age. Yeah, I don't. And... I don't think I've even still fucked a thirty-six-year-old. <clears throat> uh, well, it's you, mo you know. Most of them are uh, busted. We are right by yeah. that age. They've hit the wall many years before that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Personally, I like younger girls. I, I love. Yeah. I love like all the <laughs> incel like terminology about women like hitting yeah. the wall. Hit the wall, and, uh, busted, mid. The, the, 
thousand <laughs> thousand cock stare. Have you heard that the, one? Yeah, the thousand cock stare. <laughs> yeah, a, a bunch of dudes, and I mean, like me, who are just like completely unfucked, like guys who are just <laughs> not who would be thrilled if any one of these ladies fucking talked to them. Like, look at this washed up hoe, busted, ran through. <laughs> She get what she's hopping off the dick carousel now. She found God, sure thing, bitch. <laughs> it's, <laughs> well, the dude, guy. That it's that's what the Bible's about. It's for you guys. The veil has been lifted on fucking these criminals that we keep trying to come in. <laughs> like the rest of us, those those of us who are getting pussy have to like pretend how cool they are, and like we've we've tricked ourselves. It, it's like it's a there's a delusional aspect to it because you have to hang out with them so much that you have to be like, yeah, actually kind of dating shows are cool. <laughs> yeah. But if, if you're able to stay away from them for long enough, you see them from afar and you go, what the fuck is she talking about? Yeah. So what you're saying, <laughs> you're saying like in, in cells are like, uh, like they're the guys in the matrix, like they've been pulled out of. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean they are red pill. Yeah. Dodging pussy, so, yeah. like <laughs> Do yeah, bullet bullet time, dodging pussy. Uh, I yeah, I guess. I mean, I do. I think if like a, it, I think if enough guys, I think if you're a guy, and you actually like sit down and think like, what do I want for myself, and what am I looking for, like whatever, you would you would find that you're like, you know, in in your efforts to get your penis. Uh, inside of a woman, you're you're like putting yourself through like Vietnamese POW torture, basically to get to that. You know, you know what I mean. Right. Like, yeah, like having to having to like watch Real Housewives is you know shit yeah. like that is like is it really worth it at that point? Or maybe just like jack off until you can find you know the right broad who will play like Warhammer or something well, with you. That's what's great about nowadays because. Porn, porn is so good now that, like, almost undeniably, at least when you get to a certain age, unless it's so accessible, porn is better than just being a single dude trying to fuck people. What's mm -hmm. what porn doesn't facilitate for you is having a loving relationship. So, really, what you need to do instead of trying to fuck all these broads who might fucking me to you anyway is just keep jerking off, keep finding new cool stuff to jerk off to, and then in mm -hmm. the meantime, try and find the nicest lady that you think is pretty attractive, and that's the woman that you want to marry. Just the nicest, sweetest fucking lady. Like, yeah. That's yeah. who you want to have kids with. She'll always have your back from a nice family, so she's not, like, crazy. Like, find one of those. And then I do, all I these do bitches think, walking the street, give them no value. Cause you I do think a guy it would prefer to, like be in a relationship with a woman who does not have the thousand cock stare for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Cause you well, usually, and I, you know, I don't know what the correlation is. If it's like she was crazy and that's what caused her to, to go through that many cocks or if that many cocks made her crazy, but I guess it's irrelevant, but usually women who have sucked and fucked a bunch are out of their, just out of their minds. There is, there is like a, a penis threshold where it's like, you get to a certain number of cocks that have been inside of you and the switch flips in your brain where you're like, well, I guess I'm out of my fucking mind now. Well, what, you, what your feeling is, is that if a girl gets horny, it's only because she's been molested. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's, they all have to be tricked into being horny by uh, like a, a cousin or an older brother or like a neighbor. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe to initially have sex but if you build a rapport with a woman and she truly falls in love with who you are and what you represent and you stay with her for years she'll eventually just be horny all the time for you because mm -hmm. that's how girls work they just start to love you and now they always want to suck your dick because they love you so much that's the real trick is fall in love with us that's my scheme <laughs> <laughs> get a woman to fall fall in love with each other the ultimate it's, grift the ultimate <laughs> yeah the ultimate pickup artistry is, is developing a loving relationship. Find find a nice girl with a good family and <laughs> yeah. trick her into loving you. Trick her into loving you unconditionally, and then take and then take her to Pound Town. 
<laughs> yeah, you actually have to you actually have to pause these girls. They say to neg, but really you just have to pause them and just th- be positive so they think you're the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> well, like give them yeah. HIV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're paused up, bitch. Yeah, it's, hey, it's now, who, are you gonna, who are you gonna go to now? It has to be me. <laughs> Either me or fucking like pause.com, the HIV dating site. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I thought pause.com was actually a black gay porn site. Yeah, would you would you be well, a HIV there? dating site pretty similar? It's actually a dog <laughs> it's actually a dog toy site. Pause. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually yeah. it's actually my dad. Mhm. Paul. Mm-hmm. Pa. Oh, Paul. Mm, pause. Right, oh, it's okay. a site for dads. It's I thought dad. you were calling your dad gay, and I was like, "All right, Tony. it's a site for dads with HIV." Mm-hmm. Pa- oh, Pause.com. P P A W Z. Paul. Oh, Paul, you got it. Paul, you got AIDS. Don't worry, Paul. Oh uh, shit! It's not no. a death sentence anymore, Paul. Yo, so how does uh how does KB Kevin Brennan get all these goddamn super chats? What the fuck's going on with his geezer he's, ass? He's, I don't know. He's he's got the, he he hypnotized the dabble verse, and now there's just a bunch of guys like I guess whose wives left him and they're collecting pensions or something, and they're just giving their <laughs> fucking retirement and SSI checks to Kevin <laughs> Brennan. You know what I think it is too? I think it's like all these retired like fucking police officers and like union plumbers and shit that were compound media slash Kumia fans. And then eventually they were like, even I'm not this racist. I I gotta, I gotta find somebody else. And it was like, Kevin Brennan, he seems like a (laughs) a cool fucking old ass fucking dinosaur ass guy. Yeah. Yeah, They didn't, they didn't stick with Aaron Berg when he made the jump. So they had to go with someone. Yeah. uh, Berg fucking, I don't know. He, he made the leap and then it's like, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Something, something didn't quite take there because it's like he still kind of wanted to be that guy. I've met Berg. He's very nice. He was actually in uh, one nice. of my music videos. Um, did me nice a favor. Guy, friend was, of the show. He he's also very funny. Like if you see him live, it, sometimes he's, he's just one of these guys. He's, that gets, <laughs> he's one of these guys that gets like caught up in kind of like the tricks of talking about topical politics and shit like that and having to take a side on it like that that's where he kind of loses me a little bit and a lot of these older dudes specifically older jews like just have to be so proud to be jewish it's like hey maybe while everybody hates you not be an arrogant dickhead there's an idea (laughs) you're talking about him wearing a fur coat and smoking cigars while the palestinian protesters are screaming at him because i actually thought that was kind of cool maybe I, I mean, dude, being involved dude, in it whatsoever is kind of gay. Yeah, this, no, this yeah. Guy, no. Going going on tour with Judy Gold to be pro Israel is <laughs> yeah. kind of the most heinous shit you can do. <laughs> pro Israel, dude. Tour. The, the, the Zionist folks like Berg and Rappaport and like all these people, like uh, Jews, a lot of the Jews have, have gone so long without ever like receiving criticism for being Zionist because you could never criticize Israel before. The, their minds are still in that place and they don't even realize like what the fallout is going to be like when the dust settles and everybody's heads are screwed back on straight all these fucking people are going to be like cast out they're fucking done you can't like go like yeah, what you just said miguel out. like doing a pro is you say they're going to be cast out they're going to be cast <laughs> out once again they're going to be we're gonna round out. them up we're, yeah, we're gonna they're going to be yeah, rounded put them up on a train <laughs> I mean, I, I, I just, I do think like they've lived in this bubble for so long where they've been able to like leverage the sympathy of just being like whiny fucking Jews, you know? Right. Oh, the, the Holocaust, remember the, 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 <laughs> the Holocaust happened, and so you can't say anything about us. So that was the thing for so long, and, and now that like we're seeing all this go down between Israel and Gaza, like all these like Berg and all them going on a pro-israel comedy tour to raise money for the idf there's going to be consequences for that and it's gonna he's gonna have to go back he's gonna be begging gino to come back on that show <laughs> he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna need a job <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. gino come on convince him that i hate jews <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't know man 
you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe nothing bad will happen to him. But I just, I, any, whenever I see like a fucking like college in, in Gaza get blown up and there's all these accounts like, oh, you, the best thing that's happened at a college university in quite some time. I'm like, you guys, people are, people see this. Yeah. Like, we're, yeah. we're all watching this. <laughs> They, they have been the strangest because they used to be so good at propaganda, but when it turned on themselves, they just, like, forgot how to do it. Well, that's the thing. It's like, were they ever actually good at propaganda? Like this, well, this when they were being sneaky me, about it and they were doing it for other people. Think, like, oh, they actually don't really have that firm of a grasp on how to control a narrative or how to make themselves look, you know, sympathetic or how to make people sympathetic towards their thing. It, it worked they for the last 60, things. 70 years. I mean, it does kind of dispel the, uh, like, conspiracy theory that Jews control everything and, like, control the media and the narrative because ever since this kicked off, they've been so fucking bad at making themselves look good, at, like, doing propaganda. Like just completely incompetent at it. It's like maybe maybe you guys just got lucky and you just had a really good streak for a while, but you're not part of any sort of like shadowy organization. That well, that locks into what we I think I was we were talking about this the other night. That almost uh, alludes directly to an opposite theory, which is maybe the Jews saw the writing on the wall and they were like, "Let's make ourselves look bad," so everybody's like, "They couldn't possibly control the narrative if they're looking mm -hmm. this fucking bad." Oh, they're there very forty. Let's give up the tunnel, guys. Yeah. Give them a little. Yeah. Let's sacrifice the tunnel, <laughs> you, bro. You think there was then... like a like a discussion, like the show Succession, where they were like talking to the tunnel guys, like, "We're gonna have to burn you." Yeah, yeah. We gotta, we gotta <laughs> give you up. We gotta give somebody up. That was their Tom. <laughs> yeah, the tunnel <laughs> the tunnel guys was the Tom Wams gans of Jews. <laughs> uh maybe. All right, I'm getting bullied by the super chats for my stature. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody uh guys. everybody donate some money and say where you would like Miguel to be in his Yeah, career. whoever donates the most money, I'll decide. Oh, God's node. We got a fucking ten dollar super chat here. 10 what am i what kind of fucking hate speech am i about to read 1096 <laughs> the rhineland massacres look at wikipedia this led to the holocaust this means there have been 845 years of lying anti-semites i don't even know what i just said i didn't Dude, i feel like you, that. You, yeah i feel like when somebody you gotta on save the, that one for the patreon yeah, yeah when, when, when somebody on the internet starts a sentence with a, a year that begins with 10 it's like, damn, we're about to get into some real fucking <laughs> yeah. icy territory. We're going. Anytime going someone brings up the Rhineland, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's ICP territory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, God, thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, I don't know what you just made me say. <laughs> what kind of ritual that is? But thank you, God's Node, for ten dollars or God's and Ode. God's and Ode, like God's Odie word. from Garfield. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, and I hope the rest of you guys uh, lead, but. Or uh, follow up his example. God's note is fucking balling out in this goddamn chat, really yeah. throwing his dick around while y'all sit around like bums. If you have any white supremacy to share with the group, yeah, you yeah. better pay at least a minimum of ten dollars. Yeah. Please share yeah. any interesting Wikipedia pages that. <laughs> yeah, was well, it, it says here the Rhineland massacres of the the the, Drew, the German Crusade of 1096 were a series of mass murders of Jews perpetrated by mobs of French and German Christians of the People's Crusade. In the year 1096 or 4856, according to the Hebrew calendar, these massacres are often seen as the first in a sequence of anti Semitic events in Europe, which culminated in the Holocaust. Uh, so, I mean, I guess he, you know, it happened. Or, so, you you're know. saying that that never happened. You're saying how many Jews were, did you say just got killed? It just says that it was a, ser a series of mass murders of Jews that happened in. 1096 so i don't i don't know how many got killed it says like 2000 so like more than the holocaust is that the that sequel was, to series of yeah, unfortunate that was the events Holoc holocaust prequel that was the it, yeah it's menace. the phantom menace <laughs> 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 the phantom menace of the holocaust yeah cool oh, shit good topics um, here <laughs> yeah i guess we're really diving into it today folks uh Ju yeah. uh, Jews <laughs> <laughs> um, can't can't live with them. Can't live without them. Mm -hmm. as, uh, hey, that's what my my dad always said. That <laughs> no, I just mean oh. specifically they are my landlords. Oh, okay, <laughs> that checks out. 
Um, can you can anybody hear that I'm talking funny? I got this giant fucking wound on my tongue that's yeah, well, getting in the again? way. How the eating... fuck? How the fuck did Jews get away with not being white? How the fuck did we let that happen? They they are the whitest white motherfuckers ever. The Jewish privilege is so much greater than that of a fucking white privilege, especially being a poor white in the South. Like, and they they just parade about like they are fucking more oppressed than blacks. Even it's it's crazy. I, I don't mm. know because they are white. I like all the they're like, the whitest. European, yeah, like all the European Jews and Polish and whatever, they are just white people. And I guess there are like the the Jews that originate from like the, re- the Israel region that area, like the Sephardic Jews. Those are the more like swath- swarthy, olive skin toned, like Zohan Jews, I guess. Right, like his Israelis. <laughs> yeah, Israel. I, so I, I guess there are like white Jews and uh, black white white Jews. Uh, <laughs> White, white, Jews. white Jews loan money like this. Uh, white <laughs> Jews loan you money like this. You know, I don't know. <clears throat> I thought that was going to be like a knock knock joke. Like knock knock, who's there? Why Jews? Why Jews? Who? Why choose bounty when you could choose brawny? Yep. There you go, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's comedy. Mm-hmm. I just workshopped an entire fucking bit that David Lucas would be happy to have in his act <laughs> David in fucking Lucas. five seconds. <laughs> yeah, he could use that. <laughs> yeah, that guy, uh, say what you will about that guy, but you just can't cancel him. He is un- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tr- truly uncancelable. <laughs> he can't be canceled, uh, David shit. Lucas. They tried. They came for him. You and think he, he you think he went outside on his block and grabbed some of the caution tape from where someone got shot and wrapped it around his mouth? <laughs> Do you yeah. think at this point they're like doing fake the, like they have bots pretending to be trying to cancel people? Maybe. For clout. It's like a, I, a, this is what I was thinking yeah. with um the handsome dude. Matt Rife. Matt Rife. Matt Rife. I don't think anyone was really upset with him. No. I don't think no, anyone I... listened to his jokes and had feelings about them one way or another. I think that most people were bored or surprised at how much it stunk. But like, I don't think anyone was really mad at what he was saying. I think that they had to hire Indian dudes to pretend to be white girls on the internet spazzing out. So he would have like the clout of cancellation. So so you think that like David Lucas manufactured his own like outrage? Yeah. I don't think any black people were actually upset about the whole George Floyd thing. I I mean, from the start, it wasn't that crazy. It wasn't that crazy. You know what I mean? Like, well, to speak to the Matt Rife thing, I think you're absolutely right. I don't think anybody gave a fuck about like the retard jokes he was making or whatever. I think what happened was there was overwhelmingly online so many dudes like this guy's fucking gay. Fuck this guy. And they were like, if we can figure out a cancellation angle for you, we might be able we'll, to turn we'll, some of those dudes on your side to defend you. All the dumb right. ones will defend you. Right. Um, and with David Lucas, I think that a lot of black people on Twitter were actually very mad at him. But the thing about David Lucas and the real, the the reason he was never even close to getting canceled is because black people are not his audience. The only black people in the show walked out when he made the George Floyd jokes. The other guys had cowboy hats on. They were like, hell yeah, tell some more of them jokes, boy. (laughs) So he's he's very cerebral. Oh, he is a cerebral (laughs) assassin. He's very, he's he's very, he's a cerebral comedian. You go, you know, he makes you think, uh, yeah, I, at the end of the day, I am just a civilian. I can't re- really understand or wrap my head around. <laughs> right, and he can't wrap his belt around his waist. <laughs> <laughs> Folks. Folks. Guys, Man. we have fun here. We, this is we, the we, Sorry, this I, took, is, uh, I took pre-workout today, so I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, nice. Go, yeah, you have, go to the bathroom. You have to shit? Yeah. Can you take yeah. your camera with you? You got to take a Yeah, well, I'll just take, take the, the mic. Take the mic. Yeah. Take the, take the mic with you. Take a shit. <laughs> Uh, about shit. Uh, yeah, think- David David Lucas did make the most of that moment, though. You know what I mean? Even if it was a little self manufactured to the point where he was trying to, you know, be like, "Oh, you can't cancel me," or you know, whatever. Like, I self manufactured he- last night. <laughs> <laughs> didn't he go on JRE like almost immediately after that? I guess I don't. It. it I, I do think like if you're 
if you're one of these guys who is a, um, I don't know, a hack, yeah. it behooves you for there to be some sort of outrage so you can claim that, oh, they're trying to cancel me or what, you know, this, this like provocative thing is happening. Uh, Dude. But you, you're too da- you're so dangerous, you know. You need it, so it helps. So I, I think like a lot of these guys, like biggest fear really is not like being canceled. Is that people will stop giving a shit enough to even want to cancel them? Because like it was years that that was happening. The the culture wars and all that, where somebody would say something, or tell a joke, and then like a number of people would get upset about it. And so it was there was like this great uh, symbiotic relationship between hat comedian and those that were offended by them and now now that it seems like people are just like don't care that much anymore all these guys are fading into irrelevance because all they had was you know like you know like david lucas being like man what's up with being gay how you know, man? I'm man, the back the back door boy look at these boys having sex with, butt sex with each other i couldn't have no butt sex with a man brother i marinated on that clip for like two days i was like it, it was mind blowing to me that somebody that's like considered this high level of comedian, kill Tony, all this shit did this clip and there wasn't a single fucking joke. Like he didn't make one fucking joke. He was fucking basically just being a news reporter. He uh, came I, up I, with the phrase backdoor boys. <laughs> backdoor yeah. boys. Yeah. Which I yeah, guess. And said I, it like, like four times. I guess it is funny, but if it's all you have, then you're, you're it's just alliteration. Funny. It's a, it's it. alliterative, and hey, look, that makes you think. It's a, and you know, alliteration is actually his mother's name. <laughs> alliteration. Alliteration. Alliteration Lucas is his <laughs> mom's name. God's Node says, shout out to Crack Amico with the success of Two Bears, One Grave. Thank you, God's Node. You donated $20. You're really fucking... If this was a strip club... You you're making it rain all over the whores. They're they're giving you free lap dances, and the rest of the chat is sitting around like fucking bums, like fucking weirdos. So yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate you, man. Somebody, we may have to blow you after this. Somebody said I have a mean ass <laughs> widow's peak. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. Yeah, looking like Herman Munster cheese. Yeah, you look like yeah. Wolverine right now. I do. Yeah. <laughs> this shit like, really isn't nothing to you. This shit ain't Hell nothing yeah. to me, man. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> I just I usually take a nap after work, so you, you catch me like right after work. I'm I'm not I'm not on a nap. I didn't get a nap in, so I'm having you know I got to get the pistons pumping. I got to mix some oil with gasoline for this two cycle lawnmower that is my mind. Yeah, you're not a nappy headed hoe right now. You need to get a, <laughs> a little nappy in. You know, I miss that time. Uh, I have a lot of, like I feel like if um. If, if you played, like, the Don Imus station tag for me, like, Imus in the morning, or whatever, I would, it would probably, like, t- it would be like the scene in Ratatouille when he, when the food critic eats the Ratatouille and he goes back to being a kid. If I, if I heard, that's some nappy-headed hoes right there. I, I would be transported back to my youth. I'm like, oh, I remember the good times. You see a clip of that, you see Patrice on fucking Fox News defending him. Damn, those were... Yeah. Every time 10 years goes by, we, we're we going through it and we're like, this is the worst time of our lives. And then we get into the next 10 years and we were like, oh, my God, that was so nice, dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah nothing ever gets better. Nothing ever gets easier. My whole life, I've, I people say, oh, it's tough times right now. Uh, inflation, the economy, blah, blah, blah. And it's it's never gotten better. There's just like, you know, new things to creature comforts that exist. Like, oh, there's an iPhone now. And eggs are twelve dollars a dozen. Self checkout is pretty nice. Yeah, I guess self checkout's tight. Scotty says uh, three child support, but here, boy, Scotty has never said one legible <coughs> thing in this chat since he's been here. He's never said anything that yeah. you could possibly read and understand what the fuck he's talking about. But thank, yeah. thank you for the five dollars. It's, it's surprising how yeah. few people have any sort of grasp on the English language. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like reading most people, Finnegan's Wake. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. I mean, honestly, yeah. That's, most people are so retarded they accidentally just do Finnegan's Wake <laughs> yeah. when they try to write anything. We got. Drew Hunt, we're we're on a super chat fucking streak right now. Keep it going, oh, guys. Yeah. Keep the streak going. Uh, Drew Huntley, Dalton showing his Saiyan heritage with hair. He does look like a, a young a young Gotan right now. I, I am the I am the per- Saiyan warrior. Of <laughs> <Planet Vegeta. laughs> 
Um, and John Good Castle time. with ten dollars says Marxism is dumb. I don't think we even said anything we that was verging on thing about. Well, you just you you like that eggs are twelve dollars for a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> he he did he sent this is his third I think ten dollars super chat. No, this is a different guy. This is John uh, Castle. Here's the bad. thing that people don't realize about John Castle, though. Like I saw somewhere else earlier in this, uh, he said, "Little known fact: uh, Crack and Dalton are leftist pussies." Here's the thing about John Castle. He just likes to rile us up. He's a classic troll. Uh, yeah. He's he's troll coded. There's nothing we can do about it. We love we love John Castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friend, friend of the show. Friend Anybody the that doesn't capitalize their first and last name, you can go ahead and know that they're gonna fucking troll you. Yeah, I uh, love that people though are so indoctrinated now. Or like, I don't know where people's minds are, but it is it is funny that if you like complain about inflation or whatever, if you're like, damn, a gallon of milk is seven bucks. You're like, hey, there's no such thing as a free lunch, pal. No fucking <laughs> handouts. Okay, you, you you don't like it here, you can leave. You think socialism has ever worked? I'm like, I would just prefer it if a gallon of milk was like maybe three dollars would be nice. Yeah, we're literally on the bottom of the fucking totem pole, like the poorest people in the fucking country just being like, yo, it'd be it'd be actually pretty cool if shit was cheaper. And they're like, fuck you. But all of the tax breaks that rich people get, that that's part of capitalism. Like, oh, yeah, they don't pay tax. Yeah. Rich people don't pay taxes. Plus, um, look, if you're stoked, and neither do black people. <laughs> If you're like, if you're stoked on like republicanism or whatever, just like being conservative, then just blame inflation on Biden. It's <laughs> yeah, the most yeah, fun exactly. thing to do. You just go with Biden's inflation. I don't even <laughs> grocery shop anymore. I eat dog food. Yeah, and you can also say that all of the problems that we have with trade and uh, all of the, those foreign relations were because of the Clinton administration. And now all of a sudden you're on my side. You see how yeah, that I would works? love some foreign relations right now. A nice Filipino bro. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to do some foreign relations. Lee Rector damn near killed her, says Capri Sun game. I'm Capri actually Sun drinking game. my Animal Crossing edition uh, Capri Sun right now. Ooh, Thank yeah. you very much for recognizing. Animal Crossing is a good, like a great um, – Exercise in capitalism. You owe money to that fucking raccoon guy <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right away. Yeah, on Jewish, yeah like day Jewish one. Raccoon. I don't you're, even. I don't understand that game. It's like it's like a game. You're that, in his Hooverville. What was yeah. his name? Tom you, can only getting, you can only buy from the general store, and <laughs> like all the prices are inflated. Yeah, I don't. What is the appeal of Animal Crossing? It's like a game with cutesy animals, but then the second you start playing it, it's like. Oh, cool! I have a mortgage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I owe I money. I have to pay off a fucking loan in this video not. game. Well, that's how women learn finances. Yeah. Okay, I guess it's the only way to teach women about money is if it's like fucking raccoons and dogs. Yeah, yeah. I have to, I have to give one thousand coins to Tom Nookberg. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we we just totally dismissed that Nook, super Nook, chat. Nook, yes. I look like right Yai Jirobi mixed with Vegeta. We did the fusion dance. Oh, this is a good topic. Northwest Ken says, What's the deal with Kelsey? P what's the deal with Kelsey Plum and popcorn? Who I'll tell you she? what's the deal. She stinks. She's a weirdo. Who's and Kelsey Plum? She's she like very good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, from, then, give me wait, from Clue? Uh,. It does sound like a fake name. It sounds like a board game name. Like Kelsey for sure. Plum and Colonel Mustard and Scarlet. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey Plum with the with the hatchet in the fucking boiler room. Kelsey is uh, the Professor Plum's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from Clue, yeah, Clue Jr. It's Kelsey Plum. His former teacher's assistant that he accidentally got pregnant and now he has to marry her and make an honest woman of her. Um, oh, she's in the WNBA. Okay, that's why. I yeah, she's care. this woman that keeps doing cringe shit. Like, she was the one who, when they were doing the celebrity basketball game, there was this basketball YouTuber uh, who I think is pretty good named Tristan Jass. And which sounds like a South Park name. And he was like dribbling down the court or whatever. And she's just and bystanding. Down? Yeah. I and I like the way he dribbled up and down the court. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. He kept he kept it fresh on the microphone. <laughs> I like no interruption when the game is on. Uh but here's this bitch chatting. Yeah, this bitch is sitting <laughs> blabbering. She's sitting courtside and she's telling him, pass the ball, pass the ball. And it's like, bitch, first of all, the game doesn't fucking matter. Oh, she's the one that's like half hot. Uh, yeah, she's pretty hot. 
she seems hot when she's standing next to the rest of them then but then you see her next to a normal girl and it's like oh she's yeah, like if a hot know. girl got gigantism right she has she has like those katie nolan dimples in her face which oh, I'm don't even compare to our queen katie nolan queen. no she does look like a like a good drag queen uh there's I there is, i don't i do not find i can, i have not been shown a single attractive woman in the WNBA. Oh. any other professional sport you find like some nice tight thoughts candace parker held up well but maybe you don't like black women. Who was paying attention to the WNBA? You know, I, I am attracted to Angel Reese. Why? Because she reminds me of Draymond Green. I like her hustle. I think it would make my dad proud. <laughs> oh, does she I hustle? Like that. She 20... hustles on the corner outside of basketball? That's cool. Dude, 20 she rebounds? Money so she wouldn't have to hustle. Damn, God's node. Oh, sh- okay, hold on. God's node is goddamn blessing Ooh, me today. Jose. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Fucking bankroll in this entire operation. What is? Hold on. Where? What? What? Is that? Hosanna answer? in the highest. God's note uh, is cashing out on his crypto money. <laughs> what is Hosea? Hosea. I think that's a guy who works for my dad. Is Hosea <laughs> in the Old Testament or New Testament? Oh, here it is. Twelve seven. This is what this is what we'll be doing on my stream later. So this is a nice little preview. Hosea twelve seven. And my people are bent to backsliding from me, though they called them to the most high. None at all would exalt him. What's so that he's mean? giving back shots. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Hosea twelve seven. And my people are bent to backsliding from me. My though people they are bent up getting back shots to the most high. None at all would exalt him. So, okay, cool. That sounds Thank nice, you. dude. Yeah. I got a little feeling in my chest. He's talking uh, about the true Israelites. I guess he, yeah, what is he saying that none would ex- would uh praise God or something like um something Well, like he's that. saying that the original the original chosen people forsook their creator, you know, forsook. and were <laughs> Yeah, and were <laughs> were cast into, you know, uh a lifetime of turmoil. Okay. Berserk for Souls says, Oh, wow, you guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. Bro, stop dick riding. No, I feel like kidding. that's. Thank you that, so much, Berserk for Souls. Is that sorry? Man, people in the chat are. Oh, God's note said that's not Hosea 12 7. Well, what the fuck did I just read? Yeah, why don't you tell us? Well, yeah. I guess he has given us money. So give another super chat. Explain the explain the passage. Hold on. It, I'm telling you that that is what was in my Bible. Here, I'll find it again. But I mean, I you guess got I got the could wrong just... Bible, dog. No, I have a King he, James. I have an he, Oxford have edition. James, baby. LeBron has a Bible. That's Le- crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. That's Baruch, Ecclesiasticus. Um, How do I get this shit off the screen? I love you. Berserk for Souls, you fucking you got a big ass dick. Tobit. Thank you. Estrus. Better better than Ezra. Um Habak, Amos. Here we go. Hosea. What was the the verse was what? 12 7? 12 7. What about the uh what about the verse about Chrissy Mayer? I think it's called Horsea. Oh, you know what? I you know I fucked that up. I read eleven seven. Hold on. <clears throat> Hosea 12 7. He is a merchant. The balances of deceit are in his hand. He loveth to oppress. Who? I don't know. <laughs> who, who is this talking about? Drew, you want to tell them? <laughs> Drew Drew knows? Yeah, Drew's Drew's in on the scheme. The balances of deceit I do work are for in his hand. He loveth to oppress. Is this about Jew like the Jews? It's. I mean, who else are referred to as merchants <laughs> in the Bible? Okay, Something more like Brose at twelve seven. <laughs> yeah, red pill. Uh... That's a little preview of what we'll be doing on my stream later. You know, go just thank doing you, some Kenneth. Bible study. Kenneth with the What's five dollars. Frequency, Kenneth. Yeah, Kenneth, uh, the Strangle Chef. He's a, <clears> he's, a, he's a big fan. Thank you, thank you, buddy. Appreciate your five dollars. Yeah, Capri Sun. I'm still waiting. I hope Liquid Death gets back to me. Everybody, put a put a fucking line out. Put a bead to Liquid Death. 
Guys, yeah, so let's, let's mobilize a targeted harassment okay, campaign yeah. at Liquid Death. Everybody, I know that Crack, Crack's got a big channel now. He's got like 20,000 subscribers. I need everybody. I need everybody to do a spirit bomb directed at Liquid Death <laughs> and tell them to respond to my email. Yeah, we Find, need to figure out who the CEO of Liquid Death is. We could probably look that up, but I'm not Jonathan going to. Death. Look it up yourself. What's up? What is it? <laughs> Jonathan Death. Yeah. John. <laughs> figure out where he lives send him uh threatening just, letters. just tweet at liquid death i will release the the n-word tape from your ceo if you guys don't sponsor corn fed maybe yeah. don't make threats but you know just say something nice about you know tweet at liquid death and say hey threaten you know, them harass them send pictures of your wiener we, yeah we would buy more of your refreshing uh mountain water from the austrian alps if you sponsor corn fed with Dalton Pruitt. Yeah, we need the <clears throat> billionaire podcast network street team to get out there and really start, you know. <laughs> hey, I'm never gonna drink your water out of your shitty can water. It's but... not bad. I gotta be honest with you, it ain't bad. I yeah, just I, don't know. Uh, I, I, I like just the looked smart up... water. My fault. Um thank you, thank you, Ken. Uh, he doesn't like how many kins are in the chat. Too I actually just kins. looked up. Uh, I looked up the president of Liquid Death, and his name is actually Laquavius Death. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, seventy-six people from around the nation just spit out their Liquid Death when I said <laughs> that. It ain't just bad. Kidding. It ain't bad water, and you know the can is a much more sustainable. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, material to use when when uh, containing water. Than my friend, uh, my friend Robert no would microplastic. actually say it's high quality H two O. Yeah, <laughs> it is. To you, to, to, if I may invoke the parlance of Robert Boucher Jr., <laughs> the protagonist of The Water Boy, nineteen ninety nine, played by Adam Sandler. It is high quality H two O. Yeah. I, that was a, that was a beautiful email I sent. I was in the zone, dude. I had a flow state when I wrote that email. I yeah. can't be, I can't believe they didn't at least acknowledge like, well, hey, your show's not big enough yet, but this is a really nice email. Yeah, Most people that write to us can't even spell. Yeah. But speaking of uh, speaking of geniuses in a flow state, did you guys see another fucking another fucking uncancelable warrior in the arena of comedy? Fucking the genius Sam Tripoli. I mean, just makes Jake Flores look like fucking Louis C.K. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was such a terrible clip. It's, it's nice. It is nice because I do feel like the pursuit of comedy ultimately the end game is to find an excuse as a white man to say the n word. <laughs> That is that, that is the is end game of comedy. The pinnacle of doing comedy as a white guy is to figure out, or at least to get as close as you can to suggesting it without actually having to literally say it out loud. But to be able to find an excuse properly to do it is the quest. Yeah, like Lou, Louis Louis C.K. has bits where it, it feels like he reverse engineered a way to say like he thought of the N word and then right. wrote a bit around it <laughs> yeah. and like constructed this like magnificent structure right there's around, a fake coffee shop yeah yeah yeah. around saying the n-word and it, like by the you know when he hits you with the hard r you're like he you know he earned it you're Whereas, right like, Ca yeah, Capitanese yeah. capitalism you're right it is the avengers end game of comedy yeah, it, it is funny <laughs> it is funny to think of like louis ck like going into his like writing ritual to write a joke about the n-word probably yeah i yeah, I think most. I think most. I think reverse most engine, comics yeah, that is funny. Reverse <laughs> engineered. Yes. Yeah, I missed that. I'm sorry. I think Pun most intended. comics or writers or creative people probably just think of like a word or an idea first, and then try to figure out a way to like write something around that. I think like I think everything is much more simple than we think it is. When you think I did. About it. I did one time write down the word, the phrase, and. Anti Sam autism, and I <laughs> still haven't figured out what to do with it. But I, I, I have it on a post it note in my room that I look at sometimes. I think it's missing something. I think it needs like a anti Stone Cold Steve. Well, he definitely would love trains. Autism, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a very like Stone Cold Steve train. Sam autism, 
Stone Cold Steve Simot. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out, guys. Eventually, I will figure out how to use this as a punchline, or at least like, uh, you know, yeah, put a it tag. on a shirt. You're just inventing a like a uh, neo conservative Twitter name. Anti. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you and Lo Fi <laughs> Republican. <laughs> you just need a picture of like Cranky Kong. I'm just gonna <laughs> like a, a podcast with 85 listeners. That that's not a bad idea, dude. Create a Twitter account with like a picture of Cranky Kong, like <laughs> anti semitism and just try try and like do lo-fi Republican type tweets. Just be a reply guy for him. Yeah, just be a reply guy for lo-fi Republican is that is a sick move. Yo, that you, is you have to out racism in the in the replies. Like if he does one racism, you have to get at least like a level two racism in the replies. So you're just constantly being the more racist person. Yeah, yeah that's my it has strategy. to be completely non sequitur to what you're even talking about. Like he says something and then you just show a picture of Aaron Bushnell and go fucking retarded, stupid fuck retard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he'll answer with something non sequitur. That'd be entertaining. Yeah, let's do that. Let's create a Twitter account called anti semitism <laughs> It's a picture of Cranky Kong, and we just reply to lo-fi Republicans' tweets. By, and do by, <laughs> the landscape picture in the background is just an Aaron Bushnell on fire picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just reply to, like, a tweet that lo-fi, like, no matter what he says, just be like, you know, basketball was better before they let all these, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. melanated but... fellows in there. The the background's Aaron Bushnell on fire, and then there's like a quote bubble ahe- uh, above his head that just says the N word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it says my pronouns are yeah. the yeah. the Sam this the the Samuel uh, Triple E Junior joke. Yeah, that uh, that hey, we all know sorry. and love. I'll be right back. Cool. Where you go? Where uh, you the cruise says you can get pretty <clears throat> anti-Semitic with Goldberg. That's true. No. Oh. Yeah. Jewish yeah, the, famous Jewish wrestler Goldberg. Yes. But I, I never put it together until like last year. I was like, wait, is Goldberg <laughs> Jewish? And then I, I looked it up. I hit the early life, and sure enough, dude, it is crazy. Oh, you hit the early Goldberg. Life? Yeah, Gold, Goldberg <laughs> may be one of my favorite Jews, dude. Goldberg fucking stinks. Did I fucking see, hate Goldberg. Did you guys ever see that that Christmas horror movie he did? <clears throat> called Santa's Sleigh, where he plays Santa Claus, and <laughs> no, in the movie, it. yeah, is it like a movie, drag movie? No, Santa's that'd Sleigh. Be, <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> no, in the movie, what, what's established is that like the true history of Santa, like what Santa really is, is like some sort of demon, and so he's been cast away for a number of years, and he finally comes back to wreak havoc. Santa does, and, and Santa is played by uh, Goldberg. So it's Santa's <laughs> sleigh, and the sleigh being he's like slaw, you know, slaying the townspeople of some place. It's fun, fun movie. Yeah, you know, they it they love making anti Christmas movies, right? Like they, they really, well, yeah. Well, they, I get, I guess, but then the Jews also wrote and performed all of the classic Christmas songs. True. You know, all the Christmas hits were done by Jews. Yeah. Because, we, we, I mean, as much as they hate Christmas and Christians and, you know, uh, Gentiles and Goys, as much as they hate us, they love our money. Yeah. So they'll write some hits for us. Ah, uh, shit. It's so funny. Like, when the, when the younger Jewish guys at my work, like, you know, we'll talk and we can kind of, like, get real about shit. And last uh, last holiday season, we we're ta- I was like talking about how Christmas is coming up, and he was like, "It's like what day's Christmas again?" And it just like blew my mind that he had no idea what day Christmas was. And so I started asking, oh, him, "Fuck I was him! Like, fuck yeah. him!" <laughs> I started asking him. I was like, "Yeah, but Christmas does kind of look fun, though, right? Like you you see us doing all of our like festivities and stuff, and you have to be like, ah, that kind of looks a little fun." He's like, "No, not really." Let me guess. He doesn't know when July Fourth is either. Fucking <laughs> yeah. liar, lying ass motherfucker. Ah uh, shit. Yeah, fuck him. Everybody knows when Christmas is. Uh, <laughs> What's going on, Miguel? Miguel's. I know it keeps. Miguel's sex slave. They're my uh, out of the closet. My audio got taken over. Hose unleashed. By blue, <laughs> by some Bluetooth. Sorry. <laughs> we should be good. Everything should be good now. 
Okay. Someone invading your space. Apologies. Well, no, I'm. <laughs> Are Jews breaking into your room like Nazi zombies <laughs> yeah, right now? They're tapping into saying? our comms right Jews now. Jews on parade. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, what were we talking oh. about? What are those chocolate coins called? <laughs> it's geld. Rally round the family with a pocket full of geld. <laughs> Rally Man. round the family. Jews on parade. Um, I was trying to think of a, a currency that I knew from uh, in African country, and I couldn't think of any. Um, b- uh, bones. <laughs> Lead singer <laughs> Zachary De La Yama is human, that you've conquered their flesh. village. <laughs> Clitoris <laughs> and bones. Uh, um. Yeah. So yeah, the the Sam Tripoli thing was very hack. Fuck him. I mean, just one, one, like he just running the gamut of hack possibilities. And I think the worst, the worst part of the whole thing is after he, he says the soft A, which cop out, if you're going to be a white comedian, say the hard R, like really, yeah, really, really throw your fucking nuts around. But then after he says it, he's like laughing, like, <laughs> like into the mic, like he's so fucking excited about what he just did. It's like, well, yeah, I brother. mean, how but here, here's the thing is, I is fault right? on that. I, I'd feel the same way if I found a way to get away with saying it. I mean, like, <laughs> guys, yeah. he Robbie Goodwin into the mic. <laughs> which is a Robbie Goodwin trademark. Only Robbie Goodwin owns the breathing into the mic after you say a punchline. Yeah, yeah he, has to, he has to pay him royalty. Robbie would do that just after doing like an impression of Peter Griffin. Not, I don't <laughs> yeah. think he would say the N word. <laughs> uh, like, hey, Lois, how you doing? <laughs> 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 I how long? So how long? I understand that like. The co- pronouns is like just a concept of you know in, the, in language have been around probably yeah, forever. Professional noun. Uh, professional nouns have been around for for quite some time. Um, I guess ever since the conception of the English language, or maybe even language itself. But as far as like gendered pronouns go, this this um, like in the public uh, purview, in the zeitgeist or whatever you want to call it. That's been around for what? Putting the, putting the perv in purview, huh? Putting the perv in purview. Sorry, Dalton. Um, we have another $10. The transgenders are perverts. God's node. The arena of ideas is fierce and unforgiving. Laying bare the recesses of the mind to be tested, tried in a furnace, and ultimately proven. Thank you, God's <laughs> node. I might make that the, the bio of, of the Crowder Boys. Yeah. <laughs> make that a show description. Yeah, that's all right. I kind of want to just keep those. that here the rest of the show. Um, but how us. long how long have the, the gendered pronouns, how long has that been like a discussion? How long? Because I feel like that started becoming a thing people were talking about in like the way, in the sort of uh, social media news way. What, like 10, 15 years ago? That, that yeah, it's like 10 years. It's been years. around forever. So there's been probably a thousand different iterations of that joke of somebody being like, my, you know, my pronouns are, uh, I don't care or whatever. Yeah. There's been like so many permutations. Of yeah, it is. The, it is like dumb guy with like a lifted truck and truck nuts. Like in his Twitter bio, it's like my pronouns are kick ass. <laughs> yeah so that's what gets me more than more than just, like who i don't care if anyone if somebody says the n-word it's fun to say it's more just like that's such a hack joke that i don't understand how you could think that to yourself like sit there and come up with that joke and not realize like there's been there's a decade of this joke that already exists across like hundreds of other uh twitter <laughs> accounts and shitty comedians that's you you do have been. to consider that it is possible he has not interacted with regular people in a decade. Probably. I mean, I, but what he wait, there is, is a he, potential to be completely unaware of just regular guys. Well, you're saying how, his how family, is his Sam family's Trump a regular. He's like, got a weird family. He's probably got everyone that he knows and loves is irregular. He probably surrounds himself with strange people. Well, he need to take some Metamucil. <laughs> they're, they're so irregular. <laughs> Straight it's up a metamucil, god damn it. <laughs> He's fire, him, uh, him and Steve O look like they're having a competition who can look like the other one more. 
They're becoming the same person. Oh, I, yeah. I hate people's teeth now. Everybody's got them weird fucking veneers now. Where it's it's like, <laughs> well, your teeth weren't always like completely straight and bright white and big like that. What did you like? What did you do? And then, you know, they, everybody's getting those dumb veneers, which is going to fuck them up over time. That actually like weakens your teeth. It look, yeah. I guess it looks nice, but it look, to me, it looks fucking stupid. You look like yeah, the fucking weird. Jim Carrey in the mask. You look like you're trying to be a celebrity too. Like what you're supposed to do is just ride out your teeth. Hopefully in the years that you were drinking and doing drugs, you were somewhat brushing them. So they're not that bad, but you need to have a little yellow tint to your teeth just to look like a human being. And then when you get old and they start falling out, you just grow a mustache over them. Yeah. What you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to do is have lead dentures using slave and horse teeth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you lead your country to greatness before dying of dementia at like 40 yeah it, it is crazy to think that like the president just had like wooden teeth 200 years ago I thought they were made, were, I, his teeth were made of wool i thought they were slaves teeth that's that's the thing like uh i think me and uh philly comedian james moss were talking about this and i i told him i don't believe like i believe that they had wooden teeth i don't believe the slave teeth thing because if you if you had wooden teeth you could make them so they're like smooth and pretty and even if they're wooden they kind of read to us now like a grill like Paul Wall when he yeah. smiles and got a disco yeah. ball in his mouth. That's kind of what they look like. It's the same feeling when you, you see think it. They like, had grills yeah, you're going to tell me these African guys had good teeth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mahogany <laughs> grills. Where are they getting these fucking yeah, teeth from? That's another they, great point, they too. They were like the middle pig of grills. But uh, but also, like, if you, dude, if you put someone else's teeth in your fucking mouth, you would look like a psycho. And you're going to tell me, like, the president <laughs> of the United States was just going around with big black guy teeth of all different <laughs> sizes? Like, nah, he, he had a wooden grill. Yeah. Towards yeah. the end, he got the lips, too. What are, what are we supposed to believe that these <laughs> slaves were brushing their teeth? Yeah. That was part of their yeah. work because yeah, oh, look, what if that was part of their work routine is like when you like an hour before you go to bed you spend an hour brushing your teeth because them bitch is gonna be mine one day yeah <laughs> I, I do i do like the idea of there being like in, in 1776 like an like an ancestor of johnny dang was making grills <laughs> for the founding father <laughs> one of the guys working on the, the railroad yeah yeah one of the yeah <laughs> one of the railroad workers was like Johnny Dang's like great 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 grandfather. <laughs> yeah, that would be he, sick. He made the first grill out of a railroad spike. He yeah. Melted it down and formed the first presidential grill. And that was the, that was the first China that was the first Chinaman to ever make it off the railroad. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he he had he had a real knack for uh, for teeth for icing out teeth. <laughs> um, I want to get real though. I want to make it I, when the pocket when my podcast really takes off and my crisp my crispo crypto investments uh, really you know make uh, dividends. First thing I'm doing is I am going to Johnny Dang. That's the first <laughs> get a grill. That's the first new money, certain kind of rich purse purchase I'm making is a, is a grill. In fact, know, you're going to replace all your bones with guy. titanium. I'm more of an adult yeah. guy. I'm going to Johnny Dam. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can. We can yeah. cuss. I'm going to Johnny Dam. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny uh, Dang. It's so black funny. Guy, black guy at my work just got a grill, and he was like showing it to me. I was like, dude, how much does this fucking cost? Because it was just like like littered with diamonds and shit. And he was like, this cost Tens me six thousand dollars. Six thousand dollars. I was like, dude, that was, had to have been like half your pay last year. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> buying this? You're well, black. You only make twelve thousand dollars a year. <laughs> oh that shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, grill. I. I would never. Honestly, I could never see myself wearing a grill. I feel like it'd be uncomfortable, and I don't think I could pull it off. But Paul Wall looks cool. Yeah. I could I could rough. picture uh, I could picture Joe Rogan having Johnny Dang on his podcast, thinking that he makes like grills to cook meat. 
And yeah. <laughs> by the time the show starts, he realizes something completely different. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, this, this is cool too, man. It's a cool thing yeah, you got going really, on. What is, what is it? Like, really like eating or... elk steaks? <laughs> He's asking Johnny yeah. Dang what he thinks about yeah. fucking Bob Lazar. And Johnny Dang was like, oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> very, cool. very good at Diamond Grill. Really very good. honorable. Wait, the grill, the, the grates of the grill are made of diamonds? Is that more convenient <laughs> It's funny to think of Joe Rogan trying to talk to Johnny Dang about like coyotes. <laughs> and Johnny Dang's just thinking about like eating them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's that's what yeah. that's yeah because that's the thing is Johnny Dang is Vietnamese so like Chinese they like cats and dogs and uh, Vietnamese they they like coyotes coyotes and, and raccoons that that's the cuisine in Vietnam is coyote meat so they they look at a clip Jamie pulls up a clip of a bunch of wild coyotes and then you pan to fucking Johnny Dang and he's just salivating he's, yeah his <laughs> yeah, mouth in the yeah. water and because it, remind, it reminds him <laughs> yeah. of his his mama's cooking. When she yeah, would shark a, eyes. Yeah, a, a, a big bowl of ki- coyote pho. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, damn. Um, man, the chat's loving my widow's peak. I guess I never realized I had one. I guess I haven't buzzed my hair in a while, but yeah, I have a nice, I got a nice peak here. This shit ain't who's, nothing to me, man. Who's some other funny uh, possible guests for Joe Rogan? Who, who would you like? Here's a question: Who would you like to see on Joe Rogan? Who would be entertaining? Has he had Guy to Fieri watch on the yet? show? Oh, Fran no, Lebowitz. Who is that? Never mind. <laughs> is that uh the nanny? Yes, it's, it's the nanny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did Did Guy Fieri like inherit the the face of food media? You know, after Bourdain died, like is he the man now? Like he came out on he top. He was always the man. It. Burt I don't know. Isn't he like red pilled or something? And now they're turning on him. Yeah, I think he is red pilled because think only a big Trump guy. Well, the is, thing, yeah, the thing about guy. Bourdain is he was always a smug, fucking smarmy asshole, and it just history has been kind to him. It's like romanticizing him because he he killed himself, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they say. Um. And, and so he's, you know, he has this, he's become legend because of that. But I always thought he was fucking obnoxious. I always thought he was. He was Here's the thing about Bourdain, though. He was, he was obnoxious in his like personal life. And anytime you caught him outside doing anything or anytime you heard him in an interview, but I thought his shows were actually like really entertaining. Yeah. Well, that that's despite that, him. That's the weird thing is like he, the way he did travel shows. It was cool to see the way he would go to these other places and interact with, the, you know, these other cultures and go eat with them or whatever. But he definitely, he just had this like very smug, fucking obnoxious thing about him. I never, I, I it, it always came across as like he, he thought he was so important. He was very self important. Yeah. And Guy right. Fieri the thing is, is like, you know, Yo, you know I'm going like, to make the, the, I'm going to make a new kind of hamburger. This Guy yeah. Fieri's thing. Like, I'm I'm in the kitchen trying to invent a new way to do hamburgers. Yeah, I'm gonna right. make with, a hamburger with extra with ribs. butter. Yeah, yeah, but uh, one thing it's like you know how like we, we are we don't believe that he necessarily killed himself because he was like trying to work on ex- like exposing the pedophile ring, and then suddenly he killed himself like shortly after. Probably what happened was he knows about the pedophile ring because he was fucking kids and he was eating away at him until he was like, I'm going to tell everyone what you guys are doing. And they're like, all right, we're going to release the videos of you fucking yeah. children. You, you and he was like, fine, I'm, I'm killing myself. He did know. give off a, a, a like a very pedophile vibe. Yeah, that's yeah I think he was a fucking pedophile you. elite. Yeah. It's Anthony <laughs> Bourdain. His, his whole show was just uh, an excuse to go to Cambodia and Thailand. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm gonna travel around the world. And mm-hmm. yeah. all these Usually, you you wouldn't think that's the yeah, real does... parts unknown is a child. <laughs> yeah. He he does like Europe in like the span of a week and spends like eight months in Thailand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Th- the Thailand episode is like six hours long, <laughs> six part <laughs> <Yeah>. series. <laughs> 
Dude, uh, how dude. funny would it be if Guy Fieri killed himself? Uh, Wouldn't that be the funniest thing you've ever fucking heard? Uh, no. It we would be one that. of the that has to be one of the top funniest suicides though. Cause obviously any suicide is sad, right? Yeah. He's but just, he's just sitting there like about to jump with a noose, ties the noose around, and he's like, Flavor Town ain't big enough for the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> this buckaroo's leaving Flavor Town. <laughs> He just does one of these and then <laughs> yeah. hangs himself. He puts on his nicest flame button up. <laughs> yeah, do you think he has like a suit version of that that he wears at like weddings? <laughs> it's gonna be absolutely uh, <laughs> a suit a, f- a suit with flames on. I want that suit. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. Oh uh, damn! There's no, some I don't other people want, that'd be funny if they killed themselves. Um, yeah, he needs to Drake. stick around. Oh, I don't want to to kill himself i'm just saying if he did it would really make me laugh if i saw that in the news like guy um, fieri 58 kills himself mm, <laughs> i guess i want drake to kill himself so yeah. it's different now, the, the, the suit the super bad kid would be pretty funny McLovin? and then the, head, the headline is just like uh <laughs> mclovin dead 29 <laughs> um yeah he's only 29 he's only 29 <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Uh no I don't I don't there's nothing funny about suicide mental mental health is very serious there's something funny about everything you can think of As, I guess so yeah I, who who would be a funny suicide then um, Chrissy Mayer Lo-fi Republican <laughs> Chrissy Mayer would actually make me sad because then yeah. I'd be like oh she's not happy what she's doing she's not happy being a complete retard yeah, the yeah, reason I can make be... fun of her now is because I think she loves what she's doing and I'm like you're retarded and she would leave uh, a, a bit, little I, baby I, I, don't. I think that everyone there is as sad as they should be and it just is like a a constant fight to survive maybe probably uh, I, I i think you're giving you might be giving these people too much credit i don't think you realize how dumb and retarded they actually are yeah true I mean, Yo, they, mario bosco was mean to me in a green room one time so i'll beat the fuck out of that <laughs> midget <laughs> lesbian dude and mario bosco tried to big dog you <laughs> Big dog me, dude. Came over to our green room and took the last water, and I was like, "Oh, I was gonna grab that." And I like just trying to kind of joke with him, and he was like, "Yeah, well, maybe come to the other green room." And like, I was just like, "Okay, dude." No, your fucking place, pal. Yeah, <laughs> for <laughs> real. It's a long time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm done over here. I'm, just, yeah, I'm thirsty. Man, I've been doing this much longer than you have. Okay, no, your fucking place. He ain't made like I am. Yeah, dude. <laughs> He's grabbing you by the collar. Yeah, <laughs> grabbing me by the belt. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like a like a uh, the baby in a stroller, but it's the mob boss. Yeah, <laughs> from lady. from uh, it's the boss yeah. baby. Roger Rabbit. <clears throat> Nancy, I mean, the fucking bottle over here. Mario Bosco was nice to me when I met um him. It is a man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I could. I honestly, when I met when I met him, and he was like, "Hey, how you doing? My name's Mario." I'm like, yeah. "No, okay, no, it's not." Did he say alarmingly, it's alarmingly feminine, fucking ventriloquist puppet. Dude, yeah, and he doesn't do himself any favors by dressing like one. Like he's always wearing like suits with bow ties and shit. It's like, don't don't do this to yourself. Just wear whatever. Wear or he knows that he's Beetlejuice and he's doing Kabuki theater. I whatever. Yeah, but maybe. don't don't be a fucking prick about it. Yeah. <laughs> if maybe. I if I just was like unreasonable for one night and hit him, it'd kill him. Yeah. You could you could easily be, knock his Don't head be off. mean. You know, you know who would be funny if they killed themselves? Joe Biden. It's like, dude, you couldn't you couldn't last like another year. Like you're probably out of here anyway. There's yeah, one I would not just... believe. Why you know, there, there's why? one that would be a conspiracy theory forever. Yeah. Why no, are people he, in the he... chat asking me about Carcosa? Who do I look like from True Detective? Do I look like the retard from True Detective? Maybe he just likes True Detective and knows that you like it. Yeah, and watch like get that. excited. A lot of, a lot of people the, like True Detective, the at least the first season. Too much. Yeah, the first season rules. The first season's great. <clears throat> Thank um, you, Bubbler. Uh, wait, what were you talking about? Um, what's in the news? 
Uh-huh. Something's wrong with the world today. I don't know what it right, is. I got to step away one more time. I'll be right back, and then we'll close it out. I'm sorry. You got what? Well, you cool. got to take a doo doo. Miguel's taking a doo doo. Yeah. I'm gonna remove him from the stage until he gets I, back. I had a great, I had a great day of grifting. Um, I figured out. I, I think I, I think I finally cracked the code on grifting, and it's just like, just go into the, go into like the comments of Dom Luker and just post like <laughs> really. I mean, honestly, like I posted something that was related to what he posted, but I was scrolling through the comments, and there's so much. In, it's like, you know how like a lot of big accounts or comment sections now will just be like either bots or other accounts just posting whatever to promote themselves. Yeah, like videos. Just use. Yeah, use Dom Luker's platform for your own benefit rather than like getting mad at him or trying to like take him down in any way or, you know, going up against him. Just like post whatever you want to crack. You should go into like Dom, one of Dom Luker's posts and post Two Bears, One Grave and just see what happens because, you know, he's a grit, like he's a shameless fucking grifter who has done nothing good for this world and contributes nothing. And you might as well just like bounce off of his posts where he's like, you know, uh, here's a, what, what did what did uh, Ariana Grande mean when she did this? And it's just like a clip from her on whatever fucking Nickelodeon show she was on, and then it has like 20 million views and a bit, you know, 400 comments. Just go in there and post something. Because I did that today. I posted that Shannon Blake video I made, my titty video on Shannon Blake, and it it, it did numbers. I did. I had a good day. It's of popping. Yeah, it's popping you got off. Motion? Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's, Tons of it's new up. followers. I cracked eight thousand followers on Twitter. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Nice. And it was a great day of grifting. I realized, like, you got to grift the grifters. You got to get in their comment section and just like exploit them for views, the same way they're oh, exploiting yeah. everyone else. Because I mean, they they shamelessly will just take other people's content. And like crop out anything that would credit them and then put their own watermark on it, which is what he does. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, well, fine, I'll just go into your comment section and fucking promote my shit. And you, what, what are you gonna do about it, Dom Luker? I yeah, dude, who, yeah. who breaks the breaker of narratives? I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been grifting too, man. Like I, I've been making this list that I just call marks, and it's just like accounts that get like a lot of views. And I try to go in there at like certain times a day or like right after they post something and I don't know, just post some dumb bullshit. Like at least you're posting something that you like made in the thing to like get views for like some kind of like, I don't know, content or whatever. I just go in there and I'm like, uh, the rock stands with Israel or something like that. So I <laughs> just kind of like try to piss off people. <laughs> Oh shit. David David Lucas and Dom Luker should just become one person. They because they their like names the sound guy. alike. They're both fat black guys, I think. They should just both become um Dave um Luke Lucer. Yeah. Uh they'll start a podcast called like uh Luker and Lucas. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah, dude. That'd I'd pretty- listen to that honestly. That's what I was thinking about earlier when we were talking about Goldberg. If like uh, Goldberg the wrestler and Whoopi Goldberg started a podcast called like Goldberg the Goldberg, <laughs> they get sued because it, that, there's definitely a law firm already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just call it Goldberg and Associates. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. We why, talked about people Jews. are saying super chats are being blocked. What is hap- Why? Why are super chats? Being Wait, blocked? what? Super chats are no. being blocked. No, we just ain't reading them. Bubbler oh, left yeah, a two dollar yeah, yeah. super chat. He said Dalton looking like an extra on True Blood. I'll take that, dude. I'm trying to. I'd, I'd love to have uh, sex with a woman. <laughs> 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 Which is that? That was. I think that happened a lot on that show. It was just people having yeah. sex. Yeah, Woody Harrison was fucking like three chicks. A lot of people today accuse me of having never touched a titty, and it's like I've touched, you know, a couple. Touched a few. <laughs> that did, sounds like know, a po- curb or Seinfeld bit. You, did you touch tit? I touched tit. <laughs> I touched it. Did you touch I touch a tit, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I touched the titties, Jerry. I touched the titties. <laughs> um. Yeah. yeah Her people- name's Sydney Sweeney, Jerry. <laughs> oh, I touched a tit. 
<laughs> yeah, pe- yeah, people people were really, people get like really incensed over those titty videos. Like I post one and they go, uh, clearly these are real, not fake. You fucking incel. Fuck you. Yeah. You ain't you ain't felt a titty since you were born. And I'm yeah. I, are, I'm are you all- talking specifically about Shannon Blake, who you accused of having fakers and people cannot cannot yeah, afford she- to believe that she isn't all natural. Yeah, people people were upset about that. That I said that these these are fake tits, and they were like, "No, if you observe this quadrant here, you'll see that the titty meat is spilling spilling over this side, and that <laughs> therefore these are real, and you're wrong, and you ain't get no pussy, you ain't never seen a titty in your life." And I just I just always like I just respond, "Hey, yeah. thank you for the feedback." Yeah, I'm thinking about <laughs> I'm thinking about like filming myself having sex, but just so I can have proof that I'm not an incel. So like, you know, when somebody calls you an incel online, I'll just be like, well, then how do you explain this? And then it's just like me having sex with. Like, yeah, I can't, like, it's like, not I can't wait for Drew to get arrested. Yeah, it's not <laughs> revenge porn. I just needed proof that I'm not an incel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, think you can all, I think you can all understand why I surreptitiously recorded myself having sex with this fat lady and <laughs> this man is not a pervert he is just pathetic yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i swear i'm not a bad guy i just don't get pussy that much and i wanted to show yeah. people that sometimes i do get pussy yeah there's there's crimes of passion and there's crimes of desperation mm-hmm. and and they can't they can't take you to trial on that so no no jury would even hear that that Your if you honor. If, uh, yeah, a you, hung yeah. like a chipmunk jury. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No judge yeah. would take that, would, would even um, entertain that case. Dismissed, objection, overruled, sustained. No, this is, you, did, you committed no crime here. The world needs to Bring in the dancing me. lobsters. Yeah, you get pussy. <laughs> uh someone in the chat um okay well <laughs> Igor in the chat <laughs> so, uh, he's, he's a he's a consistent troll of yeah me. he says he, Dalton he gets, hates everything I do yeah he says Dalton gets no bitches I mean that's true but that's just you know it's a passing it's temporary all things in life yeah. are temporary including life itself we have ebbs and flows and phases and uh, just periods in our lives that we go through and I'm in I'm in a bit of a no bi- a no bitch time in my life, but I'm build I'm building something. Yeah, dude. And growing stronger. And soon I'll fuck your mom. Yeah, yeah. B- BlackRock's short selling pussy for Dalton right now, but you know, <clears throat> yeah, that's gonna come <laughs> yeah, back. yeah. BlackRock is gathering up all the pussy in America <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that we can only rent it in the future. Nobody will own their own yeah. pussy. Nobody will own yeah. pussy the, again. The, puss- the pussy bubble the pussy bubble is gonna burst. And then yeah. what's you know what's gonna happen? Universal basic pussy. BlackRock is out betting every like middle aged single man on any open pussy on the market. Yeah. They're buying up all the pussy farmland. I yeah, just, uh, you'll, you'll own no pussy and you'll like it. Shorting pussy. <laughs> I, I just timed out Igor because he was just being inflammatory. Damn, he, he, he was being so vibes. mean. Told he me can come back me. when he's a realized dude. Mm-hmm. Was he saying the N word? No, he said that. Uh, I was coping. No, he was just saying mean things to us. He's just being worse than the N word. How about you have a fucking original thought? Everybody on the internet now talks like that. They're like, "Oh, you're just you're coping, cope harder, loser." It's like everybody copes. I've said like that's the thing is that's not even like a. Um, <laughs> Den- it's not like a denigrating remark to, to claim that someone's coping with something because it's like everybody has coping mechanisms so get fucked uh igor <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never actually said used the word cope as a verb i think if i did i'd probably cringe to death if yeah I it's also did. just like a cringy <laughs> thing you, you'll you'll cringe and cope and see <laughs> <laughs> where i where i come from cope is a uh it's a dip and it's the nasty one. I like grizzly. You like grizzly? Yeah, grizzly wintergreen oh, long damn, cut. Dude. I yeah. always wanted to be a dip guy, but I just threw up every time I tried it. <laughs> yeah, I've heard yeah. myself a couple of times. Even I I I was doing a zin the other day and I took a shot and I accidentally drank the zin and I threw up like five times in a row. 
yeah. You don't, don't want to swallow a Zin. You, do you not want to <laughs> drink a Zin down like a pill? <laughs> it I, will upset your tummy. Yeah. I yeah, the first time I ever tried uh like red man chew, I just immediately threw up because I, I didn't realize how juicy it was. So I kept swallowing it on accident and I just like violently threw up because of it. <laughs> yeah. It's tasty though. I mean red red man chew is very nice. Tasty. It's fun. It feels fun until it hits your tummy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. J- just like uh just like uh, swallow and cum. <laughs> yeah, you see how yeah, I wonder how much pussy this guy gets. You see how quick he fucking makes another YouTube channel. Just hey, to that's come another back in subscriber here? for you. Hey, no, he doesn't have to subscribe. He, he can just be in here. Oh. You know what's sure. funny? Probably probably like a fun guy. Probably someone that we know. It's probably yeah, another yeah, guy yeah. in the chat that you recognize that also has like five other accounts that he trolls you from. That's every time every time I see these guys spazzing out on Twitter where it's like they have six followers and they're just like going after dudes that for sure they're big fans of and just like picking apart their insecurities. It's like, you know, that's your friend, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. People are so mean now. Yeah, he he'd probably love us if we like grabbed a beer and we like start talking about like black people together. No, I'm and, telling yeah. you, that's like Dunbar or some like it, it's it's John Castle. It's like someone else in the chat that's just having a good time by fucking with us. <laughs> Come on, Agate. Come have have a have a brewski with us. Well, I can't drink <laughs> anymore. I'm a, I have to have a sprite. Yeah. But um, you know, the other guys will have a beer with you. My thing um, is with uh with trolls and haters because I'm 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 a hater. I'm a king hater. So I can't just be like I don't like you cuz you're hating on us and what we're doing. But I think hating all hating should have some sort of value whether it's you're making a joke hating or you're hating and being so mean that it's absurd. But if you're just saying nice cope like you're you're just being a dick. You're like you're not providing yourself entertainment. You're not providing us entertainment. You're just putting up. You're, you're mad about the amount us. of effort they're putting into their hating. I I don't know, dude. I see it. I see it a lot of the time as like trolling our dudes who think that they're like tossing you away to be funny from the chat. They're like, oh hey yo, call me a fucking faggot. Tell me to suck your dick from behind. You know, I I wish I had a dick big enough that somebody could do that, <laughs> yeah. dude. If I try to if I try to pull my dick behind, but like from between my legs, I don't have enough dick to reach. You're just gonna you're just gonna see a little dick tip poking out my thighs. <laughs> you, you're gonna be you're gonna be staring at a frog's mouth peeking out from <laughs> yeah. under my asshole. Yeah, I, I guess you like go ahead and lick the tip of my penis from between my thighs. <laughs> <laughs> my problem is. My uh thank you, Ken. Appreciate that. Noted. Uh my dude, when my dick gets hard, there's no way it's bending back that way. Like, I don't know if I just have like a what you would call a curved penis, but my dick, when it gets hard, it's like in the upward position and it's fucking staying there. If you even try and like push it down this much, like it's it's not yeah. getting anything. So I don't know how the guys get it in the back. Some of those trans gals have very uh, flexible penises. They can yeah, pull well, that thing Drew, you said you said your penis points down, right? Yeah, mine. When I when mine gets hard, it's a nice like uh, you know, it's like a little U pipe going down. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, You're a droopy yeah, mine penis? points. Dude, mine points down. I remember, I remember like when I discovered that it's supposed to point up. I was like, <laughs> well, mine <laughs> doesn't like, point up. Mine point. Mine mine straight. has a hard sway to the left. Yeah, my mine curves down, and I remember like I remember when I discovered it wasn't supposed to curve down. I was like going to take a piss at one of those like trough urinals, and then I like looked over and I was like, "Wait, what is going on over here, dude?" Yeah, uh, <laughs> who knew? Who knew what we were really losing by giving up the trough? Because I think that a lot of guys that you know how like they're they're trying to complain online and like in the news that like kids aren't fucking as much anymore yeah. i think a big part of that is like dudes watching too much porn and being like crushed by penis insecurity and like if you could just go to a baseball game and see a bunch of old dudes dicks you'd be like oh actually mine's nice mine's yeah. pretty good 
I should send a couple pictures out. Go to a basketball yeah, yeah, game. The, the problem is we're only seeing the biggest dicks available. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You got to go see some regular dicks. You got to get into the locker room and see like a couple yeah, old yeah, men yeah, and yeah, be yeah, like, you oh, go to Koreatown and yeah, go to a nice Turkish bath. Yeah. Yeah. Go to a Lifetime Fitness and see a man that his penis doesn't even reach out of his bush hair. Right. And you'll feel okay. A little, yeah, a little bird's bad. nest. That's yeah. me, brother. <laughs> Give us a little robin's nest. I got a little robin egg. <laughs> are, you guys, are you guys all uh urinal guys? I go to the stall every time. I don't like I don't like uh not only do I not like pissing with all the people at the urinals, my body like physically locks up. Like and I need background music in the fucking bathroom. You, you're it's you're a shy pisser. Yeah. I'm a shy pisser. I don't drink anymore, but when I was drunk, I could I could piss like on my friend's foot while he's looking at me. Yeah. But like while I'm sober, like you don't understand how bad I want to piss when people are around and I just can't do it. And when I was on probation, it was dude, I had to drink water when I when I woke up, I had to start fucking pounding water just to make sure that I could piss um, for the PA. I mean, I'll piss anytime anywhere, but I mean, I prefer a stall for sure. It's, yeah, it's much yeah more... I just I lock up my body like locks up and I'm like I want to pee but it's like the silence of it and the other person being there I'm like fuck like even if I'm in a yeah, stall I don't know. and somebody else comes in the bathroom if there's no background music I'm like fuck man it's not it's not <clears> that's, that's it's tough for me to say anything. because I feel like the only time I'm pissing in public I am drinking so like I'm usually the guy convincing other people to let me piss in the sink while they use the toilets <laughs> like come on just let me it's we don't have to look um yeah what, what's happening Dalton? me no nothing uh my tongue hurts because yeah. i bit i bit it too hard the other day no i got i got my own oh, stream yeah. i gotta do here in a few minutes i, I still oh, yeah, get no bitches yeah <clears throat> this is but th i mean this is a uh, crack you got a nice thing going dude you're the next yeah, kevin what's, on it? what's el baldo <laughs> What's yeah, what, should I, what, what comedian should I talk shit about? Which is very funny for me to make fun of Kevin Brennan for talking shit about comedians. Warcraft, yeah, that's <laughs> what I do. <laughs> Gary Goleman. He's a tall fucking Jew. I don't understand why people think he's funny. I don't even Gary get it. Arn. What's he doing? He's mean. I like how a Kevin Brennan, <laughs> a Kevin Brennan impression is just Paul Lind. <laughs> Goblin yeah, for all the people out there who know who Paul Lind is. Paul Lind. Uh, for all the Zoomers, it's who Roger on American Dad is based off of. It's mm -hmm. The guy who used to do Hollywood Squares. Yes. Kevin Brennan impression. Oh, now. I'm getting all of these <laughs> super chats. Oh, wow. I got, many, I got so many super chats. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't even have any TV credits. Does he get to call himself a comedian? He doesn't have any I, TV credits. He wasn't on. He wasn't on live at Gotham. He wasn't on Premium Blend. <laughs> what? What's? What's one of his streams like? <laughs> I think it's just like. I think it's like a a retirement home bingo. I'm I'm doing it Tuesday. I'm gonna go on there Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's Kevin. uh, if, if we cut this off in three minutes, is that enough time for you, Dalton? Uh, yes. I well, I, I probably should bounce that because I gotta go. I gotta go to the bathroom and get prepared. Um, Here, go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom now, and then come back, and we'll say bye when you come back. So that way, the closer we are to your show, the more likely these people will file right into there. All right. Well, uh, hold on. Cool. <laughs> so funny. guys, door court, check it out. Oh yeah, we can do plugs. Uh, Dork Quartz. Uh, the link is in the description for their YouTube channel and the Patreon. So make sure you subscribe. Hell yeah! There's yeah. there's not a lot going on the Patreon. We did do a Patreon episode for the last episode, uh, and I somehow fucked up the settings, so it didn't record audio. But man, I promise it was such a good episode. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. It was us and Andy Malfreno. We did like a, a bit about how like. Uh, emo bands like bands like uh, Fallout Boy were just singing about 
how girls had a cool boyfriend, but I bet he doesn't love you as much as I do. We, you know, we, we had a lot of good jokes, honestly. You'll never hear them. Yeah, dude, it's a lot. So, yeah, that's ever. like, that's so like, if you want to pay for, hear, there was like, Sorry, that's, like, that's like one of those things where you hear there was a jam session between like, uh, like Nirvana and Alice in Chains, but nobody was there to record it. So there's just stories about. No, it. we yeah we recorded it, but only the video. Oh, <laughs> so oh if you, you want to watch us it, laugh dude. at each other, yeah, you can use your imagination. You guys should go back and dub running. it, uh, like most extreme <laughs> yeah. elimination challenge. I, I thought like about an doing anime. that just by myself, just being like Andy, being like. Well, actually, I think that you should pay attention to the government, and <laughs> yeah, just you doing. Do you Drew would be like, no, 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 I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Jews are like, actually no, it's pretty me, good Drew, guys. I'm probably saying you? something gay right now. Wow, <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Okay, <clears throat> YouTube.com right. slash at Cornfield Dalton Pruitt, Patreon.com slash Cornfield Dalton Pruitt. I got my own stream going here in about three minutes. Yep, Hell. it's uh, we're we're about to we're about to end this here. Um, we appreciate everybody coming out again. The channels of these gentlemen are in the. Was I good? Was I entertaining? Want to make sure. Yeah, dude. I think so. Okay. I think so. And uh, if this was a little, you know, a little R rated for you, a little too demonic. For you. Uh, you're in for a treat because when you click on Dalton's channel as soon as we end the stream, it's gonna be fucking Bible time. So yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna be in Corn for Bible this, this, was like, CBS. this was like dessert before breakfast. This was the, the this was the sweetness. This is what you weren't supposed to have, but Dalton's about to give you your fucking your fucking daily food groups and that bitch. Blessed be, blessed be. Yeah, so Damn. everybody uh Everybody, before we leave here, we got about 30 seconds left. I'm going to need you to fucking super chat as hard as you possibly fucking can. Yeah. <clears throat> like, it just until you can't anymore. Yeah. Don't blow um, through all your money, though, because you saved some for me, baby. <laughs> Guys, if you're in Philly, uh, April 19th at Rotten Ralph's, I'll be with Chris Wood and Andy Malfrena and James Moss. And then uh, May 1st, if you're in the New York area, I'm going to, I got a guest spot on the Durag and Friends. So come hang nice. out. Hell yeah. Any more plugs, guys? Otherwise, we're we've got just door court. It's April 15th. It's a Monday. Yeah, uh, it's the next door court. And then we're figuring out another one, hopefully for the end of the month. But we got some cool stuff on the horizon. So check it out. Yeah. And, and for me, I am like, sorry about the technical issues last time, Raphael. But I it actually, if you go to the channel and just look at the live tab, the episode is there. It just there was some complications to begin with. Sorry. Yeah, and I, I have no cool shit coming up like Miguel, but please just follow me on Twitter at Rotism69. Please, I love you guys. Here, <clears throat> Dalton, Dalton, you can go. You can go ahead and go if you want. Go okay, ahead and everybody, that come way. to my my stream. YouTube.com slash at Cornfield Dalton Pru is starting uh, now. Goodbye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I love you. Goodbye. Love you later. Love you, Dalton. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't, did I step on any of your plugs, Drew? Nah, nah. You got good. anything else? Well, cool. Well, I just want to tell everybody in the chat, uh, thank you for coming and hanging out on this edition of the Crack House, the dorky crack corn, and we don't care. <laughs> um, thank you so much for hanging out with us this weekend. Thank you to my guests for sitting in with me in the arena of ideas, dusting off their swords and uh, and their shields. Um, and really just uh, spitting back and forth some high level concepts. We talked about Jews. Um, we talked about Guy Fieri killing himself, really just all the important topics yeah. that we need to get to uh, the things that other people like uh, Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer are scared uh, to talk about. Um, we appreciate you guys preparing your mind uh, for concepts that are so high level. Please remember Ooh. to watch the Crowder boys every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern with me, Robbie Goodwin and Dalton Pruitt. Miguel, what's up? It would be funny if Jamie Kennedy killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the Jamie Kennedy yeah. experience. <laughs> Hell yeah. What if uh what if uh instead of Joe Rogan having like the giant podcast, it was actually Jamie Kennedy? Jamie Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, I think the, the life would be the, like if that yeah. happened. The Jamie. Yeah, it Jamie. it is funny. Jamie. 
to think of Jamie Kennedy like <laughs> sitting in the back of a limousine or uh, like a, in the back of a car and he just blows his brain out. <laughs> uh, damn. Yeah, fucking Jamie Kennedy, um, who pl- played Jerry Heller in the. Did you guys watch that documentary, the Michelle A documentary? Uh, no. Nah. Does that ring any bells for you? What's that on? Ah, what was it? On? I think it was on Netflix. Um, but if you ever watch this, it's about Michelle A. It's the artist that dated Dr. Dre. And the whole movie is just about Dr. Dre finding different ways to beat the shit out of this woman. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like comically almost like it's three stooges level, <laughs> like beating this woman and it starts Dude, out the double iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's music in the background. It's like, <laughs> yeah, Dr. Dre is literally like punching her in the face and recording it and like sampling it on his beat pad to make beats. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and if you, if you, if you smoke before you watch it, You'll think it's a joke when you turn it on because this woman's voice is so weird. So if you get a chance, check it out. Tell me what you think. It's not that important and it's not that good. But Jamie Kennedy plays Jerry Heller, the manager of NWA in it. And he's actually nice. he's pretty good. Better than Paul uh, Giamatti. <laughs> um, no, but um, and also not better than Jamie Kennedy. I will say one thing about Jamie Kennedy. Uh, one of the best, one of my favorite portrayals of a wigger that I've ever seen in Malibu's most wanted. I, I didn't feel, yeah. <laughs> I didn't feel, you know, when I'm watching some of these guys, like when I'm watching Gary Owen and I feel like a black guy feels when he sees somebody with the Sambo makeup, like tap dancing saying yes, Massa. <laughs> I felt it was a very ac- accurate portrayal. Um, I, th- I think he you say he's more of a field wigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's less of a house wigger. <laughs> Yeah, if I ever make a movie, that's what it'll be be called, the House Wigger. <laughs> it'll be like it'll be based on House Bunny with Amy Ferris, but it'll be me instead. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't want to take too much time away from uh, from Dalton. He's got his own stream going now. I see we got fifty two motherfuckers up in this bitch right now. So if you, if you like funny people and you like white guys, uh, <laughs> go to Dalton Pruitt's channel. It's right in the description again. We can't thank you guys enough for fucking being here. You probably don't have anything better to do, but still, uh, thanks for showing up. Thanks for exchanging blows in the arena of ideas. And uh, until next time, Crowder Boys Wednesday. Um, we got another stream a week from today, live from the crack house. Um, you guys know when the next Dort Court is? Yeah, April 15th. It's a Monday. Two Mondays from now. Two Mondays from now, April 15th, Dort Court. You know, show up. It's the only uh, it's the only show that gives the chat the power to influence the show um, besides besides this one and besides Crowder Boys. Uh, but really, the chat is the star of the show. So if yeah. you guys like being in the chat um, and, and making jokes um, here, let me ask the chat a question. Who likes when comedians do bad on this show? Who likes when comedians <laughs> do good on this show? No, just kidding. Uh, t- Tony Hinchcliffe is very gay. Um, and one thing that I think where Dork Court separates themselves from Kill Tony is one, there's no gatekeeping going on because Dork Court really has nothing to offer you. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We will you're not on. make anyone's career better. There's, you're not like going to learn how to be better at comedy. No one's going to try to tell you how to be better at comedy without any idea of how to be funny. Yeah, and the, so they're not holding anything over your head. There's not this like, uh, there's not like this pearly gate that they're ready to open for you to give you stardom. You're really just coming to be part of a grassroots movement. But the number one thing that sets you apart is how many years has Kill Tony been going on, and how many times have you seen Tony do a fucking minute of stand up? Fucking zero. Because one, yeah. he sucks, and he doesn't want to embarrass himself, and two, he'd never lower himself to that level. These guys do a set every fucking show. They're one of the guys. They're blue collar. Um, they're like a, a blue collar comedy tour almost. We we know. are bombing every yeah. time. Yeah, we we get boots on the ground. You know, Kill Tony doesn't go out there with his troops. We're out there with the troops. Um. Here, let me make sure before I go. 
that I read uh, some of these messages because I might have missed some of the last ones. Let's see. Ken says, no gatekeeping. Read our messages, Craig. I'll read it. Uh, bring Rami Rosener back. Is that Romy? you guys know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out Romy. Yeah, Easily. Romy rocks. One of the goats. Uh, Edna just gives a heart. Thank you, Edna. Bubbler says, crack wink if you smashed Kim C. I don't know who Kim C is. Uh, urinal all day. Uh, I'll take I'll take a trough. Okay. Um, Northwest Kent. Now I see what you're saying, Ken. I was kind of ignoring all of your messages. Uh, <laughs> n- noted as well, crimes of desperation was the... Okay, now we're all caught up. I appreciate you, Ken. Appreciate you, Bubbler. Drew Huntley. Especially God's Node. He dropped like $40 in here. Yeah, um, yeah. So appreciate all the chats. I appreciate John Castle uh, mocking me the entire time I'm trying to do a show. Um, I really just appreciate you guys being here, for better or worse. I even appreciate Mr. Igger, um, if that is your real name. Igger and Agate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the good brothers. <laughs> yeah, Igger and later his little brother Agate came, and uh, he he was a motherfucker as well. So I appreciate you guys. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. And I strongly urge you, all forty seven people left in here, go uh, go check out Dalton's stream that he's doing right now because the man is funny. He's doing big things. And if there's one lane that I know he's proficient in, it is uh, Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> um so thank you guys very much and we're going to end the stream. We'll see you guys next weekend. Let's end this Later. right here.